How are we doing today, everybody? My name is Rowie. Welcome back to The Assist, where we break down what makes a shoe so special, why it's so hyped, and we let you know what we love so much about it. So today, we're gonna to be breaking down the Jordan 3 Cement Reimagined. We got the reimagines in the, it was dubbed the Lost and Found, the Jordan 1 Chicago reimagines. They were so popular that Nike wanted to continue that run. And so they decided that the next shoe they wanted to do was the 3. Now the Jordan 3s, these released in 1988. And when he got brought onto the team to do it, they were six months behind. They needed to get the shoe out in a very short amount of time and Tinker was the guy that they went to to get that done. When he first got brought onto the team to create this shoe with Jordan brand, the first thing he asked was, what does Jordan want out of a shoe? What Jordan said was he wants something which is bold, which stands out, which is broken in from the moment you put it on. Basically meaning that it feels like you've been wearing it for a long time, straight from day one. And so they opted for very, very soft, supple leather for this shoe. When they released it, Jordan loved it. He was obsessed with it it and they went with it. For this specific colorway, the Reimagined, this is the original color that it released in with the little fire red hits throughout. Got a little bit under the sole as well. The elephant print throughout the toe and heel. Black on the heel tab, gray on the sole, toe and heel, and white throughout. Now, on the original pairs, the heel tab and the sole were white, but for this specific pair, they've used a sail colorway, and that actually brings on the vintage look, which was the intention when they were releasing these. With this specific pair, they've left the OG tag on the shoe. Now, there's a lot of back and forth with this. There's a lot of mixed opinions on this. A lot of your very, very OG sneaker heads are gonna opt to keep this tag on because it's a huge statement. For me personally, it's just not something that I would do. I would never keep it on, but no judgment to anyone that does keep it on because there is a lot of people who will. A lot of people opt for slimmer shoes these days. And so they've slimmed down the shoe a little bit, but they've kept it so close to the original and how it used to be. The elephant print on these specific ones actually change up throughout almost every single pair. So some pairs will have this really thin elephant print like this. Some pairs will have a lot thicker. Some pairs will have both, but between the two shoes. And that's actually how it was intended to be because back when they first released them, they were very choppy changey. And so they've they've stayed on that in that lane. If you do receive a pair and they do have different elephant prints throughout, that's actually the intention. That's what they were going for when they were releasing it. Something cool about the Air Jordan 3 is it's got this huge empty panel in the side here. The reason why that is, is because when the Jordan 3 first released, Tinker Hatfield had a swoosh in there. He had the Nike swoosh branding. And this was actually because Jordan wasn't a brand yet. And so they've got the Nike branding on the heel as it was a Nike shoe back in the day for Jordan. The Jordan brand didn't come in to be birthed for till a little bit later. This specific pair, they've left the swoosh out, but there are certain pairs like the Jordan 3 Tinker Hatfield where they've actually brought that back as a little shout out to the designer. And that's a cool little feature. But with these specific pair, they've gone very OG original down the line of using OG branding, OG hang tags, and then the color combos to actually make this shoe look aged. They've got a perforated leather under the tongue and on the side of the lace runners here, as well as around the collar. They've got a soft pebbled leather throughout, suede for the elephant print, TPU for the uh, plastic heel tab, plastic, hard plastic swing tag, classic rubber sole, and then you've got your normal EVA foam in the sole. It's a little bit stiff, but that's how it's always been with the Jordans and Jordan 3s. So as far as fit goes, these fit exactly like a classic Jordan 3. So they're fairly true to size. The good thing about them is they're quite wide and they've got quite a solid frame. So they stand up off your foot a little bit. So they're not an uncomfortable tight shoe to get into. They're a bit of a mid-range height rather than the Jordan 1 high. And I guess the 4 probably goes a touch higher than this as well. But customers and sneakerheads and people from the culture have really, really uh, warmed up 
adapt the whole idea of reimagining the OGs. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this. And I think we're gonna see probably a reimagined four, It'd be cool to get a reimagined two. Twos used to be made in Italy. Yeah, it would be awesome if they brought out a reimagined two as well and slammed some, uh, made it in Italy and slammed some really, really high quality materials on it. That'd be awesome. For any of you who have seen the reimagined ones, the lost and founds, they opted to have the old Jordan one box at the bottom and then a classic just Nike runner orange lid on the top. And it's quite distressed, just like you've seen on our um, previous episodes with the Air Max One Big Bubble. The box is quite distressed. It's going for that really OG look. Same as the reimagines, uh, uh, the reimagined ones. And now the reimagined threes. They're doing the exact same thing. The intention is to make the box look like it's either come out of an op shop or whether it's just been pulled out of your granddad or your dad's closet and you've just found this really OG pair of Jordans which has been sitting there for ages and all these white parts have started to discolor from ox um, oxidation. Yeah, I think it's such an awesome touch. I really think there's a place for it in the uh, community and in the sneaker world. And I'm really glad that the community has been so, I guess, accepting of it because it means that Nike will continue down that road of releasing more. Like I think the 80s and the 90s are such an amazing time and yeah it's so cool to bring back little pieces of it and like allow the newer generations to kind of wear what they used to wear and um i guess get that nostalgia that your dad got or your uncle got or your grandfather got that little tiny bit of feeling that um an emotion that comes with buying a really beautiful product and so yeah nike captured this really well uh hats off to nike really smashed this and uh so over at pushes this is definitely a team favorite we uh we all love it over here yeah, I think if you like threes, this is it, man. This is this is definitely top tier. It's right up there with the rest of them. That's going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you for tuning in again to The Assist. My name is Rowie. Don't forget to like and share if you like the video. Let us know in the comments what you want to see next. And if you want to grab a pair of these, down in the description, we'll have a link for you to go and grab those. Thank you for tuning in, guys. These are right smack bomb in the middle. It's a nice smell, but it's strong, so it can be overpowering. I love new shoe smell. You know when you hop in a new car and you're like, damn, that's new leather. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>